So hello, my name is Niklas Haas. Uh, if you recognize the name, it's probably because of my work on the MDV video rendering. And I'm here to talk about HDR tone mapping in PLC. And in particular, sort of, uh, I wanted to give you an insight into how the tone mapping algorithm developed over time so you can understand what the current limitations are and then why they originated. Um, so I'm going to use this frame as an example throughout, which is taken from a, an HDR, a movie which has an HDR version. Uh, one of the reasons I like this uh, reference is because because it comes from a Hollywood movie, we can safely assume that the SDR version passed through like an actual professional mastering engineer. So for all intents and purposes, we can consider this as like the official intended version of how it's supposed to look on an SDR screen. So how do we get there? So you start with an HDR frame, and you apply the PQ transfer function, and you get a lot of clipping. And now you go on Wikipedia, look up tone mapping, and the simplest function you find is this, which I guess sort of works as an output. Like the movie would be watchable, but it's also not really that great compared to the SDR version. Like you can see there's a lot of missing detail and the, the whole contrast balance is sort of off. So you do a little bit more research and you find this function by a guy called John Hagel, which is really popular in video games. And that does the contrast thing a lot, like it preserves the contrast much better. But the downside of this function is that it's like way too dark compared to the original. Like you can see it's, it's missing a lot of uh, brightness overall, even though the contrast is more or less the same. And actually it turns out the reason is relatively straightforward because the tone mapping algorithm has to map like from zero to infinity down to like a relatively narrow output range, a lot of that bright region in the output range gets reserved for like potential detail in the infinity range, even though in this scene in particular there isn't actually that much detail in the very bright region, so it's sort of like wasteful. And you can fix that by rescaling the function a bit. Um, if you know, for example, the video doesn't exceed a thousand nits or something, then you can throw out all the extra range and use the, the function more optimally. Um, the question is how do we know this information? Because the only thing we really have is the mastering metadata, so we can use that and you can see it helps a tiny bit, but it's also not really that much of a difference. Um, because the mastering metadata is like applied to the whole movie, because it's, it's like global and static, so it doesn't really help as much because this scene is not representative of like the whole movie as a whole. Um, so that was sort of where I ended up uh, like after 2016. And I decided to just leave it like that for a while. And eventually I went back to the drawing board. So I, my next idea was to go back to the clip version. And instead of like, using the Hable function, I tried to design my own tone mapping algorithm, which essentially took all these clip, clip regions and applied like a soft knee function to sort of smooth them out while keeping the in range colors as, as they would appear otherwise. And that ended up looking like this, which is, um, I guess, Different, but it's also not really that great compared to the SDR version either. I especially, it it's, looks almost sort of like washed out. You know, like a lot of the color detail fades, and actually, the the reason this happens is because uh, I took the tone mapping function and applied it to each channel independently. And if you do that, like if you have a bright color, everything just sort of goes towards one, and that makes the the result color is more more like desaturated compared to the original. And there's a number of ways you can improve that. Uh, one I ended up settling on is instead of tone mapping each channel independently, I tone map on the brightest channel, and then apply the same correction factor to all of the channels linearly. And that ends up looking like this. Which you can see, it's like it preserves the color compared to the exterior version pretty well, but it's also like strangely diffuse looking, not really realistic, especially with the shoulder at the bottom right. It's, it's not, it sort of it looks unnatural. Um, so again, I decided to stop this approach. <coughs> Uh, it turns out actually, in retrospect, the problem with this scene in particular is that it's just too bright in general because it's mastered too bright in the HDR version. So the, even though the function would, would work well in theory, so to say, because the content is not well mastered, it ends up looking terrible. Um, and in particular, the Hable function I was using earlier, but this card, because it was too dark, ends up working much better for content like this. So I decided to use that as a starting point again. And my next approach was Instead of using the mastering metadata, which was not really representative of this scene, um, I decided to throw out all of the mastering metadata and instead measure it like in real time using uh, computer chatter, uh, because that gives us accurate information about what the scene actually contains. And using this information, we can apply it in real time to get an image that looks like this, and essentially solves the, the darkness issue we had before. And actually comparing this to the SGR version, you can tell that it's, like, it's, all, it's pretty good, actually, as it is. Uh, but it's also not really that it's not exactly the same, but it's also pretty washable as this. So again, I left it like this for a while. And then finally, I had the idea, instead of just measuring the overall peak brightness, 
we can also measure the frame average brightness because a lot of HR movies are just massive way too bright in general. So if you measure the average brightness and apply a simple logic, if it's too bright, you just scale everything down in brightness to make it like more reasonable. Um, that ends up looking like this. And if you compare this version to the STR reference, we can tell that it's essentially almost the same thing. So in terms of this scene in particular, um, the, the, the algorithm at, at this point in time uh, essentially reproduces what the STR mastering engineers thought would be the best fit for this uh, scene. Um, the only main difference is like a slight green tint in the STR version compared to the STR version, but that's apparently in the source, so there's not much we can do about it. So that was 2017. Essentially, the, the, the highlights was this dynamic peak detection because uh, to, to work around the issue where we don't really have metadata about the scene in particular. Um, so when we arrived at this point, uh, I took all the code, like all the MV rendering code, and made a library called Loop Placebo, which is what VLC3 used to do a HDR tone mapping uh, on an OpenGL. Um, although the VLC3 version of the tone mapping algorithm didn't have support for the peak detection, because it relies on computer traders and the VLC OpenGL module didn't have computer trader support at the time. So since then we've been working on um, some other changes. In particular, where uh, the, what my Google Summer of Code project was is a new video renderer for, uh, for VLC, which is based entirely on the placebo and uses Falcon for the computer and so on. So um, that's, that's essentially the current state and what we're hoping to get into VLC 4. Um, and if not, then the version after it. Uh, also, if you want to play around with this tone mapping algorithm, uh, the same algorithm is essentially copied at the FEMPEC uh, over like, the past few months uh, by some guy from Intel called, uh, I think, Ruin Sun or something. And uh, it's available as a VF tone map open sale. <coughs> also, there's another tone mapping algorithm uh, in FEMPEC which is called uh, VF tone map without the open sale suffix. And that's like a simpler version of the algorithm which doesn't do the peak detection at all. So it's essentially like the current VLC3 algorithm. So with that out of the way, here's some, some, some quick comparisons to how it uh, performs compared to different tone mapping approaches. Uh, this is the, the ASUS ODT reference sample, like their official guideline on how to do tone mapping. Um, and this is our result on the same input. You can tell that it's a lot darker because the scene was like very bright to begin with and our algorithm made it darker to compensate for that. Um, also interesting, the, the color metric approach I used earlier uh, in the, which I discarded later on. That one actually turns out to be very similar to the S reference image. Uh, one of the differences you can see here, for example, is like the slices of orange at the bottom um, compared to the reference version because they do tone mapping per channel and we do tone mapping linearly. They end up making it a lot more like yellow looking in appearance, whereas we have it mostly orange as it was in the source, essentially. Uh, some more examples. This is one of the, the earlier HDR test clips. This is the Sony reference SDR version. And this is our result on the same scene. Um, some more examples, we have uh, YouTube's algorithm. Uh, this is uh, one of the popular uh, HDR clips. This is their version, and this is ours on the same scene. Uh, this is their version, and this is ours. This is their version, and this is ours. This is their version, and this is ours on the same scene. And finally, this is their version, and this is ours. I won't go into too much detail on this because of time restrictions, but uh, if you want, you can download the slides and have a play with it yourself. Um, so, out of the way, basically what I think needs to be improved, first of all, this peak detection algorithm using the computers, it sort of works, but it's also very brittle. It has a lot of problems, especially it causes this sort of eye adaptation like effect because I use time averaging. Um, to solve that, I implemented an algorithm which like, tries to detect some changes, <coughs> but that also doesn't really work reliably, so sometimes you end up switching from a dark scene to a bright scene and, and it throws off the averaging. So I would really like to remove all of this uh, over-engineered uh, peak detection instead. If, what, what, I, what we really need is uh, static per scene metadata, like metadata about the, <coughs> the histogram, the average and the peak, and perhaps even in more depth um, of the actual scene we're trying to tone map on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. If we had metadata like that, that would make this uh, problem go away. But sadly, we don't currently because that is not an FFmpeg, and not a Blu-ray either, as far as I'm aware. Um, the other way we can solve it is by fixing the source. Uh, if anybody is even remotely con able to contact Hollywood engineers, tell them that the HDR frames are not supposed to be brighter than the SDR frames. frames. Um, and stop pointing the cameras at the center. <coughs> if you want to learn more about HDR, I can highly recommend these resources, in particular the report in the middle, 
a limited one. It's like a really in-depth um, explanation of HDR uh, throughout all viewpoints of the process. So uh, if you're curious at all, I highly recommend reading this. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the code is on GitHub if you want to have a play around with it. Contributions are very welcome. If you have ideas on how to improve the tone mapping, please, by all means, tell me. And if you know of another tone mapping algorithm out there that you think gives better results, please upload screenshots and show them to me to see if I can try to reproduce that as well. That's it.